Now, how do you actually execute this thing? Well, actually, it's not that hard once you write out the details. Let me try to show you an enlarged version of this so we can see this in action. So let's take a close-up shot of that action and see how Newton's method really works. So here is the close-up shot. So the close-up shot, here we go. That's just a little piece of the function where it's crossing. And remember, I call this x bar. So I make this initial guess, and all I'm going to do is show you how you go from initial guess to the next guess, because then we just can repeat the process. So I take the initial guess, which I'll put way over here, but for thinking purposes, think of it as being you know, maybe close. But even it doesn't have to be. If it's just a reasonable function, even bad guesses will work. This value here is f of x1. So the first thing I've got to do is figure out the tangent line, the equation of the tangent line. So let's see if I can draw that in here first. Not bad. OK, there's the equation. There's, there's the tangent line. What's the equation? Well, the equation of the tangent line, well, we can figure this out. We know how to do this kind of stuff. What do I know? Well, I'm going to use my favorite fact of representing lines, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. What's the slope of this line? The slope of this line would be the derivative. Since it's a tangent line, that would be the derivative evaluated at the point x1. So the slope would equal f prime evaluate at x1. Remember, by the way, this curve is y equals f of x. OK, now, so there's the slope. And then what's a point that we know lives on the line? Well, the point x1 comma f of x1. That's a point that's definitely on there. So if I plug that in for y, f of x1, and x1 for x1, I see that the equation of the line is y minus f of x1 equals f prime x1 times x minus x1. OK? So that, in fact, is the equation for the tangent line here. So let me actually write that down right over here. y equals f of x1. I'm sorry, y equals. It should be y minus. What an awful, silly thing to say. y minus f of x1 equals f prime x1, x minus x1. OK, great. So there's, there's the equation of the line. Now, my next guess, the next point I'm going to look at is where the line crosses the x-axis. So where does that happen? That happens when y equals 0. Right? The x-axis is given by y equals 0. So if I set y equal to 0, it just goes away. And now I can solve for x. I want to figure out what x value that point is located at. So if I solve this now, what I would see here, putting a 0 in for y, I see minus f of x1 equals f prime x1 times x minus f prime x1 times x1. And if I solve this now for x, what do I see? If I bring this to the other side, I would see that f prime x1 times x1 minus f of x1 equals, well, uh, f prime, ooh, I'm running out of room, f prime of x1 times x. Now, if I divide through by the coefficient, namely f prime of x1, what I see here is that x would equal, well, f prime x1, x1 minus f of x1, all divided by f prime of x1. And what is, what is that if I actually break that up into two fractions? Well, I would see f prime x1, x1, all over f prime x1, minus f of x1 divided by f prime x1. And notice they cancel here, the derivatives cancel. And so what I see is that my next guess, that next guess would equal what? Well, it would equal, these cancel away, so I'm just left with x1 minus f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. So let's think about that. That means that this value right here, which I might think about as calling it x2, is actually given by this formula. A very simple formula. Just take the previous guess and modify it by subtracting f of x1, so that height, divided by the derivative there. It's a very simple formula. And then once I have that point, what could I do? Well, now I can repeat the process. Use this as the input and get a new point. And in fact, in general, I could say it this way. The n plus first person is going to be the previous person minus f of x 
of the previous person divided by f prime x sub n. So in fact, this produces a formula where once you have your initial guess x1, you can figure out x2 by plugging into here. Once you have that, you can figure out x3 by plugging in the value x3 into here and get x4. And you can keep iterating that. And the more you iterate, the chances are, there's a good chance anyway, that you're going to actually head toward and converge right to that target point. So this method is actually known as Newton's method. A word of caution. There are times when you produce and try this method, and in fact, you're not going to head toward one of, the, one of the roots here. So be aware that when you do this, if it's very nice and pretty like this, then things are fine. But it's possible that when you use this method, you actually, instead of getting closer to one of these roots, you actually get far away because the graph is so funky. So there's no guarantee, but Newton's method says, well, if you start heading toward a point, then maybe that point is going to be a root. And the way to head toward it is by successively repeating the simple, simple formula. The next term will be the previous term minus f of the next term, f of the previous term divided by the derivative of f, evaluate the previous term. Just keep repeating that until you're as close as you want, and you're home free. So anyway, here's looking at Newton. I'll see you at the next lecture. <laughs>